May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. So we continue to move now into the final moments of the ministry of Jesus in our readings. For the next three weeks, we will read from this 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew 3, really striking and challenging parables that invite us more deeply into that life of discipleship because there's no greater joy than we'll ever find than in giving ourselves to god so let's begin today by doing just that acknowledging our wrongs acknowledging the, the mistakes the ways we get things wrong but opening ourselves to the god of goodness as we pray lord jesus you raise the dead to life in the spirit lord have mercy you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is bright and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate, that, anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble. You will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert for her 
and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her and graciously shows herself to them as they go in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my God, for you I long, for you my soul is thirsting, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life, my lips will speak your praise. So I will bless you all my life, in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet, my mouth shall praise you with glory. On my bed I remember you, on you I muse through the night, for you have been my help, in the shadow of your wings I rejoice. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from God's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise. And then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. 
The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You'd better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They'd gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. He said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Six years ago, uh, during this time, I was in Jerusalem for a month of sabbatical. And one of the, the great treasures of Jerusalem is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And most of the time, you know, there's just this huge queue of people, just massive crowds of, of pilgrims who are trying to, to make their way through the various sacred sites that are contained within that basilica. But uh, I just wasn't able to have the patience to wait hour upon hour for you know, a few moments just to be able to get into the tomb. And one of the uh, other priests who was on the sabbatical program with us uh, said that he'd organized to get tickets for us to be able to stay overnight in the Holy Sepulchre. And I thought, yes, this is a chance that I, you know, I won't want to, to give up. And so we, we go there at the appointed hour. There's only about uh, six or eight people allowed to stay overnight each time. And then watch this whole ceremony of the locking of the door as the different Christian communities uh, from the Eastern churches and from the Catholic church and from the Orthodox churches all kind of gather for this ceremony where the main door into the basilica, I guess, is, is locked from the outside. Um, and it's a Muslim who holds the key to the, the, the door each night. And I thought, yes, okay, now we're about to go to the tomb and be able to finally pray there. But they're told, no, 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 no. First, they need to do the maintenance. And so this whole veritable army of, of helpers begin to descend upon the, upon the basilica. And all of them begin to bring oil to replenish, to replenish the the, the oil lamps that, uh, that adorn all of the, the area around the, the tomb. And so we're just sitting, waiting, and we're like, how long will this take? And they're like, uh, you know, at least an hour, hour and a half. And so about two hours later, after all of this kind of happens, uh, we're finally able to, to get uh, into the, the, the Holy Sepulchre, into the, the actual the place of the tomb. And it was a, you know, a, a wonderful moment. But that sense that you know, all of that work kind of needs to, to happen. And, and during that first couple of hour period, I was trying to just go around. Uh, it's a massive kind of building, trying to find somewhere that was relatively quiet to be able just to, to sit and to pray. But of course, if they weren't changing the oil in the lamps, they were starting to restore the frescoes or there were people kind of setting up scaffolding or all this kind of stuff. And it was like, oh my goodness, all this kind of thing that needs to happen in order for us to, to enter into the worship. And so those, the oil and the lamp is this crucial part of, of our lives because it represents all of that sense of being open to the wonders of God. It's not something that you are able to borrow from somebody else. Now, the bridegroom was generally late. It was part of the game that apparently is, is even still played through to this day in that, that period, in that area of the Levant, between both the Muslim and Jewish communities. They still have this, this practice of this extended period of a wedding feast that would go for about a week. And there's any time almost in that period that the bridegroom could arrive. So these poor bridesmaids know 
so they have to bring extra oil. It was just the, the presumption. You had to bring extra oil. So the wise ones are not doing anything extraordinary. They're just doing what is the normal expectation of life at that time. That you need to be prepared. That you need to offer yourself in all that you can to look after the poor, to care for the vulnerable, to be aware of those who are most in need of our community, that all of them are also part of this requirement to, to be prepared. But God will do the work. You know, it's not something that we just have to, it's not a works-based salvation solution that we're, we're after. It's all about this recognition that, no, God is the one who's calling. God is the one who is inviting us more deeply into the celebration. And that's what the life is about. That's the goal of this. It's not getting ready for a life of drudgery. It's not getting ready for a life of, of just being bored and dissatisfied. It's this invitation into the wedding. It's this invitation into this celebration of life and goodness and joy and wonder. That's what we're preparing for. And as we get to the end of this liturgical year, and it can kind of just feel like this year is, is dragging on and and all of the, the sadness, all of the stuff that's kind of happening around us. And you can all just feel like it's too much. It's just being overwhelmed by all of this. And yet the invitation is just to continue, to do the one necessary thing that sits in front of us, to do the next right thing. That's all we ever have to do. We don't have to solve everything. We don't have to, to bring a solution to all of the, the world's problems. But we need to do whatever that need that is there in front of us. And the Holy Spirit is, is always nudging. The Holy Spirit is always inviting. The Holy Spirit is always giving us a little sense of, of what that one thing is that is lying in front of us. That one need, that one person that needs to, to have that smile, that one person that needs a word of encouragement, that one person that needs that listening ear. You know, listening is, is such a crucial and important gift. So all of these works, all of these things are part of that building up the, the stock of oil in our lives. Because we know that God wants this direct and immediate access to us. That God doesn't have any grandchildren. God only has people that he brings into that intimacy of relationship. He longs for us to be his children. He longs for us to respond in that way. And so for us, we need to remember that it's our job our role to do what we can to offer our hearts more fully and more completely to the God who's always calling and always inviting us into the celebration of life with him. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us lift up our hands in prayer and bring our needs to God, who is our help and our strength. That the church will remain faithful and be prepared for when the bridegroom comes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will be alert to opportunities for the promotion of peace, especially in the Levant and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are coming to the end of their lives will see Christ face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That married couples will grow in love, wisdom and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we in this community will always have oils in our lamps and be ready to meet Christ among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in Christ will be with the Lord forever. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of freedom and celebration, give to us the Holy Spirit of wisdom that we may be worthy of such a gift, our minds filled with such grace and our lives guided in the ways of peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts that are offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Second Eucharistic Prayer for Reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries may join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you Caesar's thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, 
whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation that Jesus has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Brian, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now with the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the Apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn and share the peace of Christ. Sins are 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May the God of all grace and kindness bless you and keep you safe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's go in peace to announce the gospel of the Lord.